All right, let's bring in Jeff Adler, fresh off of his uh, performance on stage one of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. Jeff, how did that experience go for you competing you know, in your own gym with none of your fellow competitors around you? And a lot of the times you have no idea where you stand compared to the competition. So uh, to answer that question, like um, it, it felt like it felt like the open, which is what I've been doing for the last few years. Like I don't have a ton of experience uh, on live competitions, especially the games. So having that set up for me is not, it wasn't as different or as challenging as maybe for some of the other athletes. Um, I think it was fun to have it in the gym, being able to have some of the people around me to watch, come and cheer me on, see how bad friendly Fran was. That was <laughs> That was also awesome an experience, but yeah, I didn't mind it at all. It was, uh, it was fun. And so, you know, having the, the benefit of looking back now, when you initially heard the, heard the workouts and the tests, which, which events were you particularly excited about and thought you'd do well? And how did that actually play out once you got to do them? So the, as soon as the workouts came on, like as soon as I saw the workouts, for some reason, like the stress just dropped just right before that. I thought like the, I thought I would not even be in the top 20 actually. And then when the workouts came out, I'm like, well, okay, Fran, this is going to be horrible, but like it's Fran. Okay. Um, handstand push up. Well, I'm not great at handstand push up, So that's going to be fun. And then the handstand hold. Oh my God. When I saw that, I was like, well, there you go. Top 20 is going to be the, 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 what I'm going to, actually aim um but no it was like a stress relief for me it was like to see the workouts it's like well it's a workout just like any other i would do in the gym i'll, I'll just do that do it one at a time um but yeah it didn't scare me not so much <laughs> at what point in the competition because obviously you got some updates as far as you know, the standings and things like that at what point did you think to yourself you know what i might actually be able to do this um, I, I had that thought after the first two events, but I knew event six, the handstand hold would be what would determine where I could finish. Um, after the first, the first four events, I think I was fourth, fourth. So like, I was in the top five. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, okay, the handstand hold is going to drop me down, but like, how low can it go? Like I'm, I'm basically in the top 10. That'd be great. And then when the 27th place of the handstand hole came out, I was like, Oh no, <laughs> top five is gone. Basically. Uh, hopefully top 10 stays. Um, but I've, I've never had like in my mind, if I think, I, Oh, I might be in the top five and I don't end up in the top five is more devastating for me than ju just thinking like, Oh, well the worst case scenario is the top 10. And it, like, if I would have been, let's say in Chandler's position in six, it would have been a little bit less sad than thinking, oh my God, I'm top five, I'll do it. And then you don't make it. Mm -hmm. That's hard. So. So, so, so just so I'm understanding you correctly, it, you feel like you do better and handle it better when you set more reasonable expectations early yeah. on and then happen to maybe surprise yourself or outperform that and then exceed it a little bit. Exactly. I tend to do that. My coach, Caroline, she tends to say, oh, you're going to be in the top five. And then I try to don't get, I, I'm trying to not get my hopes up too much. So it's uh, less painful if I don't make it. You mentioned your coach and she kind of saved you on event one, telling you to, to sprint across the, the finish line. When you look back on that, how nice was it for you to have her there with you? And the fact that she had the presence of mind to say, get up and get over there. Um, to, to be honest, like, that little moment, I don't remember much because I was <laughs> such an she pain. won't forget. Trust me. Um, <laughs> and, like at the beginning of the workout, when the like just before we started the workout, the judge told me like this is the start and finish line, and in my head I was like, this is the start and finish line. So I, like it was clear in my head, you have to go to the line. But after that horrible workout, you just forget stuff, and that's the thing that I forgot, which is could have could have made me sixth because basically those three or four seconds 
would have, I, I would have been, I finished sixth, I think on this workout mm -hmm. and I would have finished third uh, with 12 extra points. So I'm happy I made it because that would have been like the, oh my God, because I didn't cross the line, I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> And you did make it and you, you guys posted online. There was an awesome video of you guys sitting around like waiting for the results. Um, I mean, this is, this year has been just topsy turvy all over the place, but then it all kind of boils into that moment of sitting there, anticipating, waiting, like describe that feeling and what was it like to be there surrounded by, you know, your community, your supporters and hear your name <laughs> announced as the last guy in to make yeah. it in the top five. Uh, that I think what I felt was the feeling of the actual like top five at regionals when the, like if you remember any regional like there's always the call of oh here's first place second place and then the fifth one is always the one that like did the bubble guy make it or not like that's the the feeling and I think that was what I felt um, as soon as the show went up I just phased out everything. I was just shaking on my bench. Um, and then uh, I remember like the, as soon as the leaderboard for event seven popped and I was like, okay, Quantin's there. Where's Chandler? Where's Koski? What happened? And they weren't in the list. At that moment, I was like, did I make it? <laughs> and right, right after that, the top five um, came up. So it was kind of a surprise. Um, like, uh, I did. I truly didn't think I would make it, or it would be very close. But I'm really happy that finally uh, ended up in the top five. A lot of fans might not know too much about you. You're relatively new on the competitive scene, so tell us about Jeff Adler. What kind of athlete are you? Uh, I think this year I've been uh, known as a clean and jerk guy. Um, that's for sure. So I have a relative ease with a heavy barbell. The heavier it is, the better. Um, for example, I would have loved Awful Annie to have 315 cleans. I think 275 wasn't heavy enough. That's my opinion. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much what I'm known for this year. Started CrossFit in 2015 for fun with friends. Uh, I uh, met Cavo maybe a year or so into CrossFit. Um, and starting from there, like we started training a little bit more, uh, regionals became the, like the dream, the first dream. Um, and then everything rolled out and finally getting to the games. It's a, it's a, it's a nice process. It's a four or five year project and uh, we finally made it and we made it even further than I thought we would. So it's pretty exciting. And, and so in that, in that four or five year project, what, when was the moment and you hear some athletes talk about it when you realized or knew that I'm at that games level, where, where was that moment where you could look at yourself in the mirror and rightfully think like I am a games caliber athlete. Uh, I think this it just happened this year, actually. Um, the, the first year I thought I really had a shot at competing like at almost professional level was 2017. I just fell outside of the top 20 in the region so I didn't qualify for regionals in 2017. The goal was always regionals. That was the first goal. Um, and we made it in 2018. Still in 2018, the goal wasn't to go to the games. We achieved the regional goal, but the games was for the next year or, or two maybe. Mm -hmm. When everything switched into the open format where you could qualify through the open or sanctionals, I had no expectation of qualifying through the open because top 20 worldwide is kind of a big deal. Uh, finally made it that year, but still didn't think that I was games level. And that's true. I got cut after four workouts because where it counts is on the floor, not in the gym. Mm -hmm. Now this year, for sure, it's COVID year. It, everything's online and it's a little bit different. But I think that like what I'm most proud of and wh why I think I'm now games level is actually stage one of the CrossFit Games where there's no redo. Um, you got judged by someone outside of your gym, outside, like I didn't know the judge. So there's no questions there. Um, and like the, the most proud I am is there's no redo. So you can't, nobody can say, oh, he redid the workouts three times. No, I did it once and I ended up fifth. 
So I guess we'll see in stage two if I can still manage to um, compete at that level. We'll see. And it's interesting that you say that, like, this is the year that you finally saw that. I mean, you've had, by any account, you've had a tremendous year. You look at the Open, you know, you win the fittest man in Canada in the Open. You win 20.4 worldwide. Then you go to Dubai, have a top 10 finish. We got to follow along with you all weekend there um, against a really loaded field. And then you have a podium at CrossFit Mayhem. So then if those, what do those types of events do for you in terms of in, you know, whether it's your skill set or figuring out what you're weak at, or maybe just psyche, like what do those types of performance have done for you? So every, every time we test, so a test is either a competition, the open mayhem, you, uh, we learn about where are the weak points, where are the strong points. And we usually tend to focus more on weak points and every competition brought out like a new one. So okay. like, it's maybe ridiculous to say, but I want to be as good as Fraser. It seems like he has no weak point mm -hmm. and that's what I would like to be. And every time I do a competition, I have a, a weak point. This time on stage one was the handstand hold got basically last on that workout. Um, and I want to erase those weak points. I want to be able to have a consistent top 10 finish in every workout and have not not necessarily event wins because that's not how you win um a competition but be more like in the top 10 on every workout be more consistent uh, that way you mentioned your experience of the games last year obviously that is going to be a much different setting and a much different environment uh than what you're going to face in aromas but is there anything that you learned from that experience in 2019 that you can apply to what's coming up here in october uh, I remember, I remember even if it was like, uh, I think the cuts were very stressful and I think I had a hard time, uh, managing that stress. Um, it was hard to get warmed up. Um, I, I thought I was sick uh, before every workout. So like warm ups were 10 minutes. I remember like the, the sled and uh, muscle up event. I think I did five muscle ups before the f going on the field, a few squats. And I just went, uh, I was not feeling great. And this year around, I want to be able to be a little bit more calm, composed. And it's almost like I have to mind myself to have more fun than compete to try and not have that stress and most likely help me to, um, perform better. So that's going to be, that's, that's the one thing I want to feel this year. I don't want to feel stressed and feel like I'm going to throw up before every workout. Like I want to still have fun a little bit um, and be able to warm up and give a good performance. You're not the first athlete who's told us that I just need to have fun. Why do you think you perform better when it's just, I'm just going to go out and enjoy myself. We tend to overthink so much and that's so bad. Like a workout is a workout and I have to mind myself to just do that. Like friendly friend, it's 21 thrusters, it's 21 chest to bar. That's not complicated. You do that all the time, times a hundred reps. Just do that. Do it as best you can and don't overthink, just do it. And then go on to the next event. And I think that's, that's where we're, I'm talking about me and probably most of the other athletes, that's where we're going to perform best. It's, I was just kind of thinking that the last before COVID and everything hit, the last little bit of, I guess, CrossFit competition in, in the season that we got was actually being up in Montreal in, in your guys' backyard. You know, before I hopped on the plane, we got to work out at Wonderland. And now we're kind of bookending that with you coming out to, to my backyard to, yeah. to the ranch in Aromas. And I'm, I'm, when you hear that as the top five, like what comes to your head? Did you, in any, in any universe, did you ever imagine that this is how things were going to play out? Not at all. Not at all. Like, uh, especially since lockdown, like everything has been thrown up in the air and nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, before, before the stage one, stage two, um, appeared, it was 30, the 30 athletes in Aromas. And I was excited to go there, uh, to the ranch, even with 30, uh, guys and 30 women now going there with only four other guys and five women, I, that's gonna, that's like, dream come true, basically. Um, like I had to work to get there, but it's still, it's still, I, I find myself lucky almost 
to be able to compete and have that experience. What now does your training look like as you get ready for whatever awaits you in Aromas? Um, nothing's going to change much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm one to think that a workout is a workout and every workout that you do will make you better. Um, we are still going to work on weaknesses. Everything on my hands is a weakness. So we're going to work on everything that's on my hands for the next two weeks. But I mean, there's not much you can do in two or three weeks, except stay healthy, uh, keep the engine running and being able to go hard, um, close the eyes and just embrace the burn and the pain and hopefully get to Romas uh, healthy and ready to, ready to get some points. Canada has had such a deep rooted history in the sport of CrossFit. The very first men's champion was Canadian, James Fitzgerald. I mean, you've had an, a female champion with Camille. You've had podium finishers, you know, frequently in Pat and, and Brent. So what does it mean to you now to be the, the lone Canadian, the lone person, you know, getting to represent your country now at the CrossFit Games in the most narrow down field we've ever seen? Uh, it's actually very, like, it's an honor, um, to like, just before the last event, the, my goal, like event six, seven, seven, my goal was to be the top Canadian flag, even though I didn't make the top five, I still wanted to be the top Canadian flag just to validate my open, uh, performance. But, uh, I mean, just, just beating Pat and Brent, just that is like, how's that possible? Am I there yet? Like, that's almost impossible for me, I think. Um, uh, obviously, like some, some other Canadians, they had a great weekend, some maybe not, but it's still like, I find this is, it's, um, come on, but this, uh, some flat down sans du poil. It's like, it's flattering uh, almost. Okay. So yeah, that's how it feels. What would you like to see as far as events are concerned when you get to the ranch? Um, what I want to see is sure. <laughs> just put it as heavy as possible. <laughs> um, but I don't think it will be, not for all the events. I would like to see some, some redos, um, like the, the 7K run and the deadlift, for example. That, that'd be great to do. I'd love to do it. Would it be fair? Maybe not, because I think Olsen and, and Fraser did that workout, so they know a little bit. Unless Castro changes the the run a bit, um, what else would I love to see? I just I just want to see some CrossFit. I hope there's not so too much of outside of CrossFit. Like uh, I almost hope there's no swimming because I haven't been swimming in a while. Like there's I can't swim anywhere here, so hopefully there's no swimming. Um, <laughs> just because I said that, there's going to be swimming for sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to see some real CrossFit. Like, uh, hopefully, like we've been testing, uh, well, testing, we've been doing, and we're going to keep doing some different um, variations of the girls' workout we did in stage one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, let's say, bumped up Fran or uh, like uh, five rounds of what we did in stage one, or let's say, uh, uh, maybe do. Diane at 365 or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. So we're gonna test. Uh, we're gonna test a few of those. Uh, I actually did 10 rounds of Nancy yesterday um, at 95, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Five rounds is bad. Like 10 is yeah. even worse. Um, so uh, if if those things happen, I'll be ready. But we're we're not just gonna do just that. Like we're gonna still do everything else that we need to do. It, one of the things that I hear often is that um, one of the benefits of training for the games is that you get to reinsert some fun into the equation. I, and I'm a lot of people say that because they get to step outside of the gym and do stuff that they don't typically do the rest of the year. Are you in that boat? Like, you know, you say you, you like some of the classic CrossFit. So, you know, you may just enjoy like, you know, firing away at the gym. But do you find that kind of outside of the box stuff to be fun at all? They are fun. Um well, some, some of them are fun. For example, uh, at Mayhem, like the run, the ruck run, the yeah. ruck run, it was awesome. Loved it. Like the scenery was nice. Uh, just running around Froning's farm was nice. Um, but there's some other events, for example, 2019, 2018 Dubai, the, sand, the desert run. 
Like that's oh, how something yeah. and it hurts. Like that <laughs> that was by far the worst workout I've ever done in the five years I've been doing CrossFit. That was horrible. So I know that these kind of events can be really hard and they're difficult to get ready for. So it's like you get there and just get, well, okay, like run in the sand for the first time and just go as hard as you can. Um, yes, they are fun, but I also enjoy CrossFit a lot. So anything that's very CrossFit, I love doing. You've obviously guaranteed yourself at worst a fifth place finish at the CrossFit Games, but what needs to happen for you uh, at Aromas for you to look back on your entire games experience and say, yeah, that was a success? It's, I think it's already a success. <clears throat> for me, I think it's already a success. Um, for sure, like I'm going to do my best at the ranch and no, I don't want to finish last at the ranch. And I think for me, it's already a success. And uh, I, I just want to go with that mindset at the ranch so that if for some reason I finish fifth, which is last, I'll, be, I'll still be happy. Uh, I'll do everything in, in my power to not finish last. I would love to bring back a medal and a sh podium shirt. But realistically, like I'm already in the top five and that's just for me is perfect. Well, knowing what I know about the ranch, this is my <laughs> it was my first gym, by the way. Uh, have you ever ridden a horse before? <laughs> um, uh, a little bit. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. How good can I do it? I don't know. Uh, well, we just, I'm just saying because Castro posted the photo of the horse the other day. You always got to, I know, I know you and Carol pay attention to all the, the details and she, she studies up on, so I'm just checking, you know, just a fun little, in case he throws a, a wild curveball out that way. That would be even a little I'm too not going to trust, uh, I'm not going to trust uh, Castro's posts. <laughs> that is a very, uh, a very good idea. Um, one, one quick question that I, that I had, um, and Sean touched on a little bit. But athletic background, we know for a lot of people that may not be familiar with Jeff Adler and his backstory, you know, we know that Fraser was a weightlifter, Carrie Pierce is a gymnast. What was your athletic background? What were the things that you did growing up that you feel set the foundation for who you are as an athlete? Um, <clears throat> the, the, the first gym I started doing CrossFit in was my first, <clears throat> sorry, it was my first gym membership. I had never been in a gym before not even like a regular gym um i used to play hockey not in leagues uh, i used to play with my friends a few times a week uh i love i just love sports so i used to play soccer in the summer play hockey year round basically inside outside um but i have no background like definitive background i don't have any i've just played sports growing up all of the sports, everything I could do. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. So for a guy who's never been in the gym, you walk into a gym five years ago in CrossFit, you've never done really any kind of workout. How were you able to pick up the stuff so quickly and get so good at it? Yeah. It. <laughs> good genetics, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like I've, like I've been working hard. It's double sessions. It's hours on hours of training. Uh, the, like nothing's free. But uh, I just had a good parkour, I guess. I had a good coach, probably good programming, a good, like a good ramp up throughout the years. No major injury. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it's possible. It's possible yeah. to do it. You just have yeah. to work for it. Well, well, what kind of stood out to me, and I was kind of curious, is do you feel like the fact that I've, as someone, I grew up playing sports my entire life. I trained most of my life, but that kind of tends to, dig the grooves pretty deep in one direction. Do you feel like for the most part playing sport and not necessarily training in one area allowed you to kind of have a little bit more of a clean slate to kind of work through the foundations a little bit? Yeah, probably, probably uh, for sure. Like I had never snatched before, so I learned the right way pretty quick. Um, like gymnastics, I've never done gymnastics before. I have never done gymnastics before. Probably never a pull up in my life. And then I get to the gym and I have to do those butterfly pull ups. Like, what are those? I know I remember spending hours, hours trying to get double unders and hours trying to get the pull ups. But uh, I, I, I know for a fact that people that have a background, a, a with, whether it's weightlifting, gymnastics, or whatever have a huge advantage, not only in like knowing 
maybe com like competitions, but they also know they know and they have been training for hours for years. For example, like Pat has been in gymnastics. He was used to training 20 plus hours in the week for 10, 12 years. I don't have that. So I have to, in five years, I have to catch up on 15 years of fitness, which is a huge gap, I think. So for sure, like someone that has a background, they have an advantage, but I don't think it's impossible for anyone for let's say like me that has no official background it is possible. If you want it, you just have to work for it and you got to work for a few years. Like it's not a six month thing. You got to do it for two, three, four, five years, maybe. All right. Well, Jeff, we really appreciate your time. Uh, I want to wish you the best of luck and we are definitely looking forward to watching you, you know, throw down at the ranch. And I hope you get some of the events that, that you want. <laughs> Hopefully. Thanks for having me.